Okay, this will be our non-ruminant carbohydrates, so we'll do both structural and non-structural carbohydrates on this pig. We'll start with non-structural carbohydrates. Okay, and in the mouth, we're gonna have a decrease in particle size. We'll also have the unimportant addition of salivary amylase. And so we'll go ahead and draw our line all the way through our pig. So if you want to see it, it just goes all the way through the pig. Nothing's really going to happen in the stomach, which is kind of not true, but really specifically for carbohydrate digestion, nothing terribly important happens. When we get to the pancreas, or when we show up at the duodenum, the pancreas is going to release pancreatic alpha amylase. And pancreatic alpha amylase is um, going to break the starch down into smaller pieces by hydrolyzing 1,4 bonds. We're not going to draw it so much, but you need to keep it in mind. The pancreas is still producing buffer. That buffer is going to raise the pH. It's going to provide sodium for the absorption of glucose and galactose. And it's also raising the pH makes it so the enzymes can stay active. The small intestine is going to secrete brushy border enzymes. And there are six of them. We have glucoamylase. We have maltase. Isomaltase. Sucrase. Lactase. And then last but not least, fluorizin hydrolase. Okay. And the activity of pancreatic alpha amylase and then the brush border enzymes is going to re result in glucose. galactose and fructose all being available for absorption. We just made a video of the enterocyte, but as I would if it was me and I was studying, I'd make an enterocyte here as well, recognizing that the enterocyte Is who's going to make the brushy border enzymes, but we'll put the transporters here, SGLT1, and then uh, GLUT5, and when I'm drawing them, I would be thinking about the fact that GLUT5 does fructose, SGLT1 does um, glucose and galactose. basal lateral membrane, we have GLUT2. Okay, and so these guys are going to get absorbed. And then from there, they're going to go to the blood. And in the blood, they're going to travel to the liver. So, still doing good. Glucose, galactose, and fructose all travel to the liver. And then the body's going to 
where the liver is going to metabolize galactose and fructose to glucose. And the liver is going to release the glucose. The liver can store some of the glucose as glycogen, but it's going to release most of it. Okay, and we're just going to leave the glucose there for a second. And we'll talk about what's going to happen in the large intestine. And so in the large intestine, we have microbial enzymes. And the microbial enzymes are going to take this. And this is really mainly starch. Now is what we're going to have left over because the disaccharides are highly digestible, sucrose and lactose. And so the starch is going to be fermented into acetate, propionate, and butyrate. And those are going to be absorbed. You're also going to get the production of CO2, methane, and MCP, which get excreted. Okay, the acetate, propionate, and butyrate get absorbed. We're going to put a little star here because butyrate. Um, serves as an energy source. For the epithelial cells in the large intestine. So it's going to be an energy source for the epithelial cells or the colonocytes. So the epithelial tissue will use most of the butyrate as a source of energy. And then the remaining acetate, propionate, and butyrate go to the liver. And from that, the liver is going to release a couple different things. The first thing it's going to release would be VFA metabolites. We're not going to really worry about what those are called, but this is from acetate and butyrate. And it's also going to release glucose from propionate, because as we said, propionate is glucogenic, so the liver can use propionate to synthesize glucose. In the pig, this is not hugely important, because just not a lot of large, not a lot of fermentation takes place in the large intestine, but we still need to capture the concept or the idea, okay? The VFA metabolites can be used as energy or to synthesize fat. The glucose, as we know, is going to enter the blood. And so we have this glucose. When the glucose enters the blood, it goes throughout the body, okay? And one of the things that happens is this glucose goes to, um, dashing it just so it's easier to see, goes to the pancreas, okay? And the pancreas is going to, as a result of this, is going to release insulin into the blood. Okay? And that's really important because this insulin is going to help decrease blood sugar. And insulin is going to act on two cell types. It's going to act on muscle cells and adipose cells to increase glute 4. Okay, so we're going to draw adipocytes an adipose cell. We're actually going to draw two of them. Okay. And one of them, the GLUT4, is going to be inside the cell because this one, the cell, doesn't have any insulin telling it to move the GLUT4 to the surface to allow glucose to be absorbed. The other one, we're going to put insulin on. 
So it's receiving this signal from the pancreas saying, hey, we've consumed glucose and we would like to absorb that glucose into the cells, decrease our blood sugar. And this is going to happen in both the adipose and the muscle cells. And then we have the absorption of glucose. And in adipose cells, you can use it for fatty acid synthesis. And muscle, you can use it to synthesize glycogen, use it as a source of energy. So the glucose goes to the body. And so muscle and adipose, it's GLUT4 that we're going to use as receptors. The rest of the tissue, or transporters, the rest of tissue equals glute one through three. So the transporters for the rest of the tissue will be glute one through three. Okay. Down here at the bottom, we want to make sure and capture some things. So lactose, just so we remember to study them, becomes glucose plus galactose. And that is done by, we'll come add the enzymes later, sucrose becomes glucose is hydrolyzed into glucose plus fructose. Maltose becomes glucose plus glucose. And where maltose comes from is starch. And starch two forms, amylose, amylopectin. Remember amylopectin is the more complicated, it has branch points, amylose no branch points, amylopectin is very similar to glycogen in its structure. So we're going to make oligosaccharides. saccharides. With amylose we get maltose and maltotriose. From the oligosaccharides in amylopectin we get maltose, maltotriose, and isomaltose. Enzymes catalyze the hydro hydrolytic reaction to make this glucose. And if it's in the small i, we absorb glucose. If it's in the large i, we have fermentation. And we absorb acetate, propanate, and butyrate. Okay. And so for the enzymes, lactase, sucrase, maltase, pancreatic alpha amylase, glucoamylase, maltase, isomaltase would be the enzymes that work there. Okay. Good deal. Now we will do structural carbohydrates in the pig, which we're not going to feed a lot of structural carbohydrates to pigs. But sometimes we do feed them some. Um, you'll have the same reduction in particle size in the mouth. And as you move through, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to happen to get the large intestine and you can have some fermentation to make acetate, propanate, and butyrate. And this would be a good time to remember that when we ferment fiber we get more acetate or a greater proportion acetate than when we ferment non-structural carbohydrates. These guys are going to get absorbed 
and basically the same thing is going to happen to them that happened to the VFAs from the non-structural carbohydrates. Just like with the non-structural carbohydrates, we're also going to have the production of CO2, methane, and MCP, even more CO2, methane, and MCP, so they're going to get excreted out, more in the sense of additional. Okay, just to help us remember what happens to cellulose, we can think cellulose and cellulose structurally is really similar to amylose, right? It's a long chain of glucose molecules, except it has beta bonds instead of alpha bonds. And so cellulose becomes oligosaccharide. And then that oligosaccharide becomes cellobios which becomes glucose, which is subjected to fermentation. And we end up with acetate, propanate, and butyrate. Oh, so that completes the important things on the pig drawing.